chest up, shoulders back. This is Revival Fitness, your home for gains and brains. And on that topic, we are taking a test today. So class, welcome, please take your seats. This is the official remastered body dysmorphia exam. We're going to calculate your body dysmorphia score and see how screwed that you really are. I've made a number of videos about this topic in one way or another, and I always get tons of comments of people confirming what I say and sharing their own experiences. And from what I can tell, maybe it's because YouTube is predominantly male. It may seem more so this way, but there is a ton of body image issues and eating disorders and all this stuff. It's getting just as prevalent in young men as it is in young women. We commonly think about these things as mostly a female exclusive phenomenon. At least in the fitness scene, that is definitely not the case. So all of the questions and concepts here apply equally to both sexes. But people assume that it's only the meatheads and the gym rats and the bodybuilders who suffer from these problems. And that is not true either. Ever since social media has ruined everybody's life, the average person now, even if they don't or barely work out and or care about what they eat, they still have some degree of these problems. There are levels to body dysmorphia. You could really place these on a spectrum, but for the lucky ones, it's more of a meme. Something we acknowledge but can laugh at, it doesn't really affect us very much, if at all. For a lot of people, body dysmorphia is a general thing. It tends to be on the back of your mind, but it's not going to impact your overall life very much. Maybe in short bursts, you may have some flare-ups, if you want to call it that. But ultimately, it's not something that is totally unmanageable. But in the more extreme cases, it can be crippling. All kinds of plastic surgery and procedures done. Their entire day could be ruined if they see an unflattering photo of themselves, or if the scale goes up by a single pound. I like to provide humor about these topics because laughing at something is a good way to start to accept it and I think ultimately better understand it. But make no mistake about it, the social media obsessed culture that we live in today, and especially the fitness industry arm of that, they're extremely toxic and they will rot your brain and drive you crazy if you're not mentally prepared to deal with them. So yeah, good luck. So before we begin, take out a pen and paper or something to record your answers down on. The rules of the test are thus. For the following 25 questions, you are going to answer yes, no, or sometimes. Anything answered yes counts as two points, anything no is zero points, and sometimes counts as one point. And by the way, do not fudge the sometimes option here. You can technically answer sometimes to almost any question, but be honest with yourself. You know deep down that most of these are going to be a yes or a no, Save the sometimes ones for things that are a genuine toss-up or very circumstantial in your own life. Once we're finished up with the questions, we will add up your total score and see where you place on the spectrum. And as a free bonus, I am going to reveal my results at the end as well. I will give you a few seconds in between each question so you should not have to pause the video. And let's get started with number one. I look at social media, namely YouTube and Instagram, on a daily basis. And you could also say TikTok comes into play pretty heavily here as well. Number two, I follow or subscribe to multiple fitness influencers and personalities on these platforms. Number three, I regularly watch guys who always have sharp abs and or say that bulking doesn't work or is bad. The most prominent examples here are going to be Greg Doucette and Athlean X, but there are a lot of other culprits, a lot of them I don't even know about, and far too many to name, but you know who I'm referring to if this applies to you. Number four. I actively search for, request, and consume natty or not content. This includes on YouTube, on Reddit, on forums, TikTok, Anywhere else, you can get your hands on it. Number five. I compare my physique progress to the bodies of specific influencers, bodybuilders, actors, and other prominent people. Number six. I am scared to go on a serious bulk, 
and or have failed in the past because I get anxious over gaining body fat. This ties into my concept known as ab anxiety. I'm going to have another video about that coming out soon. Be sure to look out for that one. Number 7. My self-esteem is highly correlated to whether or not I have some level of visible ab muscles. Number 8. I worry about my facial features, such as eyes, ears, lips, forehead, etc., and routinely compare my features to others, both in public and on the internet in private, and this often ties into face rating content and the very extreme aspects of the black pill. Number 9. When I get dressed, no matter what I happen to be wearing, I check every angle I can in the mirror. Number 10. I check myself out multiple times per day in mirrors and on my phone camera, no matter where I am or what I'm doing. Number 11. I take at least one photo of myself every day, even if I have no intention of posting it, or even if I instantly delete it. Number 12. If I take said photos of myself, I will retake the photos over and over to get the ideal angles and lighting and view of myself, once again even if I have no intention of posting the picture. Number 13. If presented with a meal or foods that I did not prepare for, I get anxious over them and or outright refuse to eat them, even if I want to. Number 14. If I indulge in an unplanned meal or foods, I frantically work out that day or the following day in hopes of so-called burning it off. This can include both weight training and or cardio. Number 15. Big one here. I weigh myself every single day. Number 16. I track the calories and macros of every food I eat, and I will obsessively search for the label if I cannot find one directly. Number 17. I get very anxious when going to the beach or some area with a swimming pool because I hate taking my shirt off, and or I simply will refuse to do so. Number 18. I subtly try to flex, posture, and or exaggerate my physique in public in hopes of being noticed and or receiving compliments. Number 19. I measure my body parts on a regular basis. This is typically going to be done weekly. Number 20. I say that somebody doesn't even lift or that they have a so-called mid-physique if they do not resemble a stage-ready bodybuilder or fitness model. Number 21. I regularly alter my training to accommodate my perceived physique imbalances and weak points. This can range from skipping certain body parts to doing excessive volume for certain body parts, or even spamming body parts in hopes that they will grow very fast. Number 22. I wear waist trainers, girdles, extremely tight shirts, lifted shoes, and other accessories on a regular basis in order to accentuate my appearance and try to hide my flaws. Number 23. I have haphazardly rushed into using steroids, SARMs, peptides, or a combination of those things in hopes of rapidly and dramatically changing my body. Number 24. I have gotten some form of plastic surgery, Botox injections, lip fillers, synthol, or something similar to fix what I perceive to be wrong with my body. And finally, number 25. I believe mentally that by attaining the dream look that I envision, that it will deliver me happiness. Alright, time's up, pencils down. Now of course this part does involve some math, 
if you click away now, not only do you have body dysmorphia, you probably have a lot of other problems too. But, quick recap. For every yes, that is two points. Every no is zero. And for every sometimes is one. So add all of these up right now, and your total score is going to range anywhere from zero all the way up to 50. We've got five total tiers on the spectrum. The higher up that you are, the worse that your case is. And keep in mind, this can be improved. Like, you may be at a very high point on the spectrum right now, but as you mature and start to understand a lot of these things and the ins and outs of the industry, and you just get more comfortable with yourself in general, you can reduce your score over time. So I would encourage some of you, take this test now, check back in every year or so. Ideally, you'll be able to reduce the points on a lot of these questions, or at least some of them, and you're going to be able to sort of measure your tangible progress with your body dysmorphia that way. So the first tier is zero up to 10, and this means you don't even lift. Now, luckily there is still time for you to keep your sanity and escape this godforsaken scene if you are this low on the spectrum. I'm only half joking here, but just keep in mind that I warned you, you could find another hobby and other things to do that are much more productive with your time. You may want to consider it. But seriously speaking, if you are in this category, it means that you're largely sane and content with yourself, even though there's no proof that you are. But this is a great place to fall in because in either case, lifting does not have you by the throat, so to speak. There are other things in your life that you still look forward to. You may even take a break from the gym for a few weeks. You're not going to go crazy and lose your mind if you cannot hit the gym and do all of your other obsessive things. Now that said, keep this in mind, because if you just started lifting, you may be in this tier by default, because you just don't have that much experience yet. The body dysmorphia train will hit you and it will hit you fast. So mentally prepare yourself, because as I mentioned earlier, you can always change tiers, not only for the better, but also for the worse. So if you fit in here now, that is good, but always keep your guard up because it is very easy to get swept away by the nonsense. But in my experience, the two most common types of people in this tier are going to be the complete novices who just started like a few weeks ago and the guys who have years of experience. And that might sound weird because they're so far apart, but that's really how it goes. It's like dealing with the bell curve. The people that are very experienced, whether they're natural or not, whether you've competed or not, whether you even still do compete, maybe at even a high level, for example, you have become content, and it's something that you do. Fitness is just part of your life, and you get it done, and you can sort of laugh at all of the bullshit. And people that are new just have not done enough to really be in too deep yet. When it comes to the guys with six months experience, a year, two years, you're kind of still in that novice phase, maybe sort of intermediate, you're kind of digging out of things. That's when it tends to be the worst in my experience. And that goes on to the second tier, 11 up to 20, you're definitely lying. You're very likely overusing the sometimes prompt. Even if your mind immediately says yes, you say, oh, well, actually, it's not that bad. It probably is. Now, that said, this tier is probably going to be the more realistic version of the first tier, 0 to 10, for most people. Because if you take the gym very seriously, even if you do not have your entire identity wrapped up in it, it is very hard given just the state of society now and all these other factors not to have some level of self-obsession and looking in the mirror all the time and things like that. If you miss a workout or two, you're going to be okay. If you miss a meal, not the end of the world. You probably don't step on the scale every single day, or even if you do, you kind of do it more so just for tracking purposes. It's not something that you're going to freak out over and make drastic changes over. That is, of course, if you are being fully honest. That goes into the third tier. Now things start to get spicy. 21 to 30, this is officially the danger zone. This is the point to where your body dysmorphia is either going to slowly improve over the next couple years, or it's going to spiral out of control. If you haven't haphazardly tried your first steroid or SARM cycle yet, you very likely are in this tier. So if you're in the danger zone, chances are you've been lifting for at least a number of months up to this point. You probably watch a lot of fitness content, you're probably at the point where your family makes fun of you for eating so much chicken breast every single day. You used to throw on shorts and a t-shirt, grab your water bottle, and go to the gym. 
Now you've always got your outfits coordinated and you've got a mountain of supplements to take as well as your pre-workout shake. You're at the point now where you're probably improving and you've made noticeable gains, at least I hope that you have, but you're not truly qualified to give advice, even though you think you are. The gym has gone from something that was a general interest of yours, now it is basically the cornerstone of your life. You keep up with all of the fitness industry drama, you can name every single feud, the new guy, the old guy, what this person said, what this guy said, what he said in response to that guy who was responding to that guy. The fitness industry has become your soap opera, and you are a stay-at-home mom glued to the screen. You're at the point now where you parrot what you hear the big channel say, even though you don't have the experience or the understanding needed to actually verify it. You also clock many shifts without being paid as a volunteer form policeman, in the comment section, you are always there to tell somebody that their squat did not hit parallel, so it doesn't count, that sumo deadlift is cheating, and that their lateral raise form is two degrees off of where it should be. At this point, really, you have become an insufferable keyboard jockey, and in your head, you have aspirations to compete in something in the next couple of years. You hit a few more big PRs on your main lifts, this is gonna get pretty bad. And if you're cutting and you start to see your abs for the first time, or if you get truly ripped for the first time, it's over for you, bro. And that catapults us into tier number 4, 31 to 40. You are officially off the cliff. You initially went to the gym with a water bottle and your car keys. Now you carry around a big gallon jug of water and a duffel bag so large that you could carry dead bodies in it. Very good chance you now have natural in your bio. Wink wink. But at this point now, you are one of the most muscular people anywhere you go, unless you're at an actual bodybuilding competition. You may have even competed once or twice up to this point. You may not have done extremely well, but you have skin in the game, and now you're committed to bringing a better package than last time. If you go to a standard commercial gym, you should be standing out without even trying. You no longer just flex in the mirror. You pose. At this point, you probably are paying a coach, if not multiple coaches, to help you reach your goals, even if they're not really helping you. Even if you can mentally detach from the body dysmorphia at this point, it can never fully escape you, simply because of the circles that you're in. If you still have any friends, they are pretty much all serious lifters. You see them at the gym more than you see them anywhere else. At this point, you're probably making some degree of money from fitness, whether it is a small side hustle or your full-time gig. And we can't forget your family, because by this point, they've accepted that you are the freak of the bunch, and they know they're not going to stop you. Even if they pretend to support you deep down, they're kind of like, man, he really turned out weird. Well, they can just deal with it. And that goes into the fifth and final tier, 41 up to 50. You are at the pinnacle. You are officially God, at least in your own mind. And in the mind of your fanboys, because you definitely have at least some at this point. You're so jacked that you ruin people's days whenever they see you. Who does he think he is? Another meathead with a big ego. If you're a woman in the same scenario though, you are going to get visceral reactions. These can stem from people staring at you for minutes on end, mouth agape being shocked, you're gonna have a range of comments from, oh my god, mommy, please step on me. The other end of it are people who are going to say, you look like a man, that's disgusting. No matter which you are though, you're gonna get numerous DMs from people asking to worship your muscles and to afford your growth hormone, you're probably going to accept. You cannot travel anywhere without your cooler and your meals always packed. Even on airplanes, you will happily go through the TSA and have them search all of your coolers because it's that important that you don't miss a meal. You don't care how bad your tilapia smells and how much people complain about your protein farts. You exist to be big. Your hobbies now include going to bodybuilding and powerlifting meets for fun. Which is like paying to go watch paint dry. You even will risk getting arrested internationally to ship yourself your own PEDs. You are deep in this life. Or... You're so insecure about your body that you're scared to start lifting because you're scared that people are going to judge you because of the fact that you don't even lift. In either case, you can only see yourself as small. So yeah, no matter how you really slice it here, you're screwed. I will say for myself, since I started competing, this has gotten a little bit worse, but I've also matured in that time, so I think that kind of evens out. That's what a lot of this really comes down to. 
If you are somebody that is mentally and emotionally mature, these things are not going to affect you as much, and you can even compete at very high levels and not be so mentally drained and crazy by all of these other factors. That's something to note though because of the prevalence of PEDs. I've said before, a lot of people in this space have mental and emotional issues before they even really start training. Then you add a bunch of hormones into the mix, that is not going to end well. As I've said before, for every one Chris Bumstead who started juicing heavy in high school and got rich and famous, there are a thousand guys who did a few cycles, got major side effects, became complete wrecks, and maybe even quit lifting altogether. The exceptions don't make the rules, and the cons outweigh the pros when it comes to going heavy into this lifestyle, enhanced or even natural, for most people. So comment down below what you got, and my total score was 10. So based on my prior analysis, that puts me in the category of don't even lift. Damn it. But really, I do think I have a good wraps on this for myself. As I've told you guys before, I really don't consume much fitness content. I used to. I don't obsessively weigh myself or track all of these things. Now granted that I am in prep right now, I have to be much more buttoned up than I normally would be. But even so, I'm at a point now to where I think I can kind of fly above the absurdity in this space. But it takes time to get here. I've been lifting for a number of years now. I've been making content for a number of years. Those of you guys that are much more entrenched in this, it's simply going to be a matter of time in terms of overcoming it. And of course, the content that you watch. I think I have plenty of content here that helps when it comes to these problems, but a lot of fitness content you see is going to do the exact opposite. So choose the content that you consume wisely, even if there is the bells and whistles and oh, but it's trending and these big names are fighting and all these other things. This guy's really ripped. You need to understand the stuff that you watch is ultimately going to shape your perception and the decisions that you make. So you better choose wisely. But that's it for me, guys. Thanks for watching. Be sure to get your program down below. Start making more gains in way less time than you thought. If you want to get in contact with me about your own body image and training and eating all these things, the best way to do so is on Patreon. You're also going to get access to our community Discord server there. Lifetime access, hundreds of other active members every single day. And use my links down below to save money on some great products and services. And I will catch you guys next time.